hello students uh, i welcome all of you in the second part of our series which we have started on the course democracy election and governance i will just briefly uh, explain the structure exactly what we are going to discuss in this lecture first of all we will discuss the correlationship between democracy and election afterwards we will look at the meaning of elections and then we will enter exactly into the indian electoral system okay so broadly we are going to look at these three broad uh, areas and uh, first we will begin with the one common question that can we have democracy without election we should ask this question to ourselves that can we have democracy without election or reverse in reverse we can ask that can we have elections without democracy okay so two way without democracy you cannot have election and without elections you cannot have democracy even if you are having elections without democracy for example uh, we have few countries which are not democratic in nature but still they have elections or they do conduct elections just for showing that they are democratic however they are actually not democratic so we will differentiate the difference between elections of democratic regimes and non democratic regimes first when we talk of uh, democracy here we have already seen that democracy is divided in two types one is direct democracy and second is indirect democracy so in direct democracy people directly participate in decision making process whereas in indirect democracy people's representative takes decision on behalf of people so direct democracy is practicable in those countries which are small in size and small in number however in country like india where population is huge here it becomes quite difficult to implement direct democracy so what option remains with us the option is indirect democracy so when indirect democracy is there so automatically we need to establish the system wherein we can elect our representatives so the system is already established in india and that system is elections so when we have to choose our representatives we go through electoral process these elections are conducted to elect our representatives and these representatives will take decision on behalf of people and they will represent all people in national parliament and when we talk of states so we can say that members of legislative assembly are also elected in india who represents people at state level and when you talk of national legislature so in india we have parliament in which we have lok sabha and rajya sabha so elections for lok sabha are conducted after every 5 years wherein people directly goes to polling booth and they cast their vote over there so exactly in this series we are going to see the importance of election and how our representatives are elected to the parliament and to the state assemblies when we talk of elections so obvious question comes that what format should be set in which we can establish the system wherein we can we can elect our representatives 
so when we talk of establishing the system we have a document known as constitution of india in this constitution entire procedure is already mentioned and we have to just implement it as it is and whenever the change is required for that time being we can make changes in the constitution as per the legal procedure given in the constitution itself so in this constitution it is clearly mentioned that who is eligible to vote in the election who is eligible to contest elections who is the body or which body is established to supervise the electoral process in the country this procedure shows that we can choose our own representatives through the method which is given in the constitution so as per constitution we have our election commission of india in which we have chief election commissioner and two election commissioners when we will be dealing with the uh, structure of election commission we will discuss about that in detail so in short we can say that all the methods are mentioned already in the constitution so as to implement the electoral process so when we talk of election in india we have a system known as first past the post system i'm repeating the word we have a system known as first past the post system when we talk of this system in this only those people are elected who are contesting the elections in election in this only those people are elected to whom people have voted on large scale so here we can say that one need not to secure more than 50% majority in the election then what is required people are voting to every candidate in the election let's assume that four candidates are contesting elections and people are voting to all of them as per their choice so here one candidate may get 10% votes second candidate may get 20% 40% whatever is the number so here you need not to secure 50% majority in the election here you have to just secure more votes than your competitors that's all this is what expected in the elections once you get more than others you are declared as victor or winner so here there should not be confusion that one has to secure 50% or more than 50% votes in the election only more votes than other competitors are sufficient if you are getting more votes your task is over and you will be declared as winner by the election commission i will give you one example of famous lok sabha election of 1984 when rajiv gandhi was elected as prime minister of india in this election indian national congress party had got almost more than 400 seats in the lok sabha so as per that one can assume that they must have got 80% votes however this is not the fact in that election indian national congress had secured almost 48% votes but still they could manage to win more than 400 seats in lok sabha so here what we have seen that you need not secure 50% votes you just have to take more votes than your competitors this is called as first past the post system 
now we will look at another option that is proportional representation now what is this proportional representation few countries are there where for example few countries are there where you need not go through this first past the post system they have established proportional representation in their electoral system here when we talk of proportional representation the world itself says that you will get the seats as per vote share you have received in the election let's assume that you have secured 10% votes but you could not form the government so in this case even if you have got 10% votes so 10% seats of the national assembly or parliament will be secured for your political party if any party has got more than 50% or 70% votes in the election so naturally 70% seats of the national parliament or national assembly will be reserved for that political party so in short we can say that entire country is treated as one single constituency and seats are divided or seats are allocated as per the vote share they have received in the election when we talk of election one most important feature we have to understand and that is free and fair election and when we talk of free and fair election it can be expected in democratic countries however if you take non democratic regimes for the sake of you know elections or the just for the sake of taking or conducting elections they do conduct elections but you cannot guarantee that those elections are fair however there is higher possibility that the elections can be manipulated however when we discuss democracy so in this democracy we are supposed to have free and fair election when we say free and fair election it simply means that there should not be manipulation in the votes there should not be manipulation even while counting the votes and such atmosphere should be created in which people can vote in the election without having any fear in their mind this is called as free and fair election in which justice will be visible and justice will be delivered as per the article 324 we have established election commission of india which is empowered to contest elections in the country in india till 1989 this election commission was single member body however after that few changes took place and now we have three member body so we can say that right now we have three members in election commission and they are first and the foremost is chief election commissioner and afterwards you have two election commissioners these all election commissioners are appointed by president of india on advice of council of ministers the tenure of these election commissioners is 6 year or 65 years of their age whichever is earlier as per that their tenure is decided however they can be on their position for 6 year or they can serve till the age of 65 the major task or role of this election commission is to conduct free and fair elections at national level and at state level we have election commission of india and we have state election commission as well which is part of election commission itself one of the major role of election commission is to conduct election and as well as give recognition to political parties giving recognition means what 
the political parties are formed in the form of associations and afterwards when they secure majority votes their status is decided if you have influence at low level so we can say that there is a possibility that your party may rise as regional party or state party however if your party's influence is nationwide if your party is big enough so it becomes national party so to maintain the status of national party in every election you have to show your active performance now we will come to the features of electoral system in india when we talk of features the first feature is regarding constituency here in india we have single constituency system which means there can be only one member for one assembly or at national level we have lok sabha so you cannot have two members from one constituency same way we have state legislatures wherein we talk of legislative assembly so here in legislative assembly we have one member to which we call mla mla member of legislative assembly so in short we can say that we have single member constituency second feature we can talk of delimitation commission in india we have delimitation commission which decides the jurisdiction or which decides the size and area of constituency after every 10 year this delimitation commission is appointed and this commission decides that which part should be separated and which part should be merged with the constituencies so here we can say that establishing your dominance in one particular area is quite difficult why because these constituencies are changing after every 10 years there is alterations in the boundaries and size of the constituency therefore we have brought this system of delimitation commission third one we can say that initially in india we were contesting elections together together means here at one side you had lok sabha elections and at second side you have assembly elections for states so elections for lok sabha and for vidhan sabha or state assembly were held together but after 1971 this system was changed and even today we are moving on this changed system so now the lok sabha elections are held separately and state legislatures elections are held all together differently another feature of electoral system in india can be the contesting part here in india anyone who is eligible to contest election they can contest without support of any political party we all know that political parties definitely do contest elections however if someone is interested in politics you need not go to any political party you can directly contest elections without support of any political party when you are contesting election you need not secure majority you need not secure absolute majority wherein you have to get more than 50% seats or more than wherein you have to get more than 50% of votes such system is not there in india you have to just secure more votes than your competitors and you will be declared as winner hence at the end i can say that i just try to explain all these uh, points related to electoral systems in india and uh, this is the conclusion i hope you all uh, enjoyed it and thank you for patiently listening thank you